Hello, my name is Doug Inge Ulstein, Norway's Minister of International Development. Right now I'm standing outside Jan Skole in Oslo, Norway. Jan Skole is a beautiful school from 1923 and the school has 330 children from 1st to 7th grade. In Norway we have seen how the COVID-19 pandemic has affected the lives of us all, especially our nation's children. At the height of the pandemic, some 1.6 billion learners were out of school around the world. School closures combined with economic hardship could push millions of vulnerable children out of school. This is serious and should be avoided as children out of school are at risk of becoming victims of modern slavery and of being trapped in poverty. Classrooms are exactly where girls and boys prepare for a meaningful future where they enable themselves to raise their hands, to put silence into eloquence and to take up a job or even to create jobs for others. So bringing kids back to school is as much the way out of the pandemic as it is the way to eradicate all extreme poverty in the world during this decade. In Oslo, primary schools only recently fully reopened. The pandemic has caused us to occasionally close our schools to help control the spread of the virus. While schools were closed, children were able to continue learning online. Unfortunately, millions of students around the world have not had the same opportunity. For example, in sub-Saharan Africa, 89% of students do not have a computer and 82% of households do not even have access to the internet. When schools are closed and students are unable to continue their education remotely, they face a higher risk of dropping out of school entirely. Right now, I'm going to sit down with Stanislav Suaro, the Minister of Education of Burkina Faso, and discuss how the COVID-19 pandemic has impacted both Norway and Burkina Faso. We will get some insight from children in Norway, Burkina Faso, Kenya and Vanuatu. Hello, Minister Ersten. Hello, Minister Oaro. I'm Armel. I'm a GPE youth leader from the Comoros Islands. I'm very delighted to be joining both of you today to discuss the impacts of COVID-19 in education. As we know that COVID-19 has affected learning for all children around the world. Let's take a look on how it has impacted the students in Kenya and Vanuatu. I walk every day 30 minutes to reach my school. It's a long walk, but I know it is worth it. My favorite part of the day is when I follow math classes. My dream is to become a journalist. That's why I have learned English by myself during school closure, thanks to the test book I received. Without that, I would have lost seven months of potential learning. Now I can only improve, thanks to my teachers. My favorite one is Lynette. I enjoy listening to her when she takes us around the world, and I learn and dream at the same time. While my classmates play, I keep on reading because I don't want to lose time. I am the last after four brothers, and I want my mother to be proud of me. A girl with a dream a girl that every day is able to raise a hand and say, I am here. I am the Mr. Sivel, I seven. The time of COVID came, school was closed, I was in the package. The time of the time of the time time table. Lo mi flasta a folia ma on paket chimla probably se full a pigni ta el kara on paket chika el kara full a time lo stati a full a li spende too much time lo play play o mekem one thing thing blogata lo one thing mekem from ta yon di help you come back to school for the teacher lista call school 
তবে বিফোর স্কুল ক্লোজ আই না গাত হান ওয়াশিং বেটা মেফলা কপাক গাত হান ওয়াশিং ম আতিং ফুলাপি নিলে অবে রুল সোশ্যাল ডিস্টেন্সিং স্কুল মি ল আমার সে ফেভারেট সাবজেক্ট লি মি মাছ ম সে মিমি ওয়ানি ল মাছ ফর সে মানে টিচা সে মানে মানে সে মানে টিচা ফ্র প্লো হেল্প ফিচা প্লো না পিকিং বিফলান অল ক্লাসরুম ওল টিভ্রেন মতন ব্লেন স্কুল ওল ক্লাসরুম ইভলে স্কুল ওল টেন্ট ই হাট ফ্রম ইভলে স্কুল কোট লাস্ট ইয়ার স্কুল ইন পতেন ফ্রম বা সাইকি ইনফরমেশন ম বাই সাই ফাইন ইসি ওক ফ্লোমি কারে মারে তাই ক্রপ মানে কমান পলিস আজ ইউ ক্যান সি ফ্রম দ্য ভিডিও হাউ স্টুডেন্টস আর রিলি স্ট্রাগলিং এন্ড ফাইটিং And as we know that since 2019, the beginning of COVID-19, many students have faced many challenges on education. So uh, I have a question. How has COVID-19 affected education in each of your countries? Minister Owaro, please. I would like to salute the presence of the Minister of Norwegian Education. et de tous ceux qui participent à cette euh, séance virtuelle. Et à partir du 16 mars, donc, nous avons dû prendre la décision, comme beaucoup d'autres pays, de fermer tous les établissements scolaires de notre pays, donc à partir du 16 mars. Et nous avons pu reprendre les activités pédagogiques pour les élèves des classes intermédiaires que le 1er octobre dernier, donc 1er octobre 2020. Et donc, ça voudrait dire que les élèves ont passé cinq mois dehors. cinq mois à la maison, cinq mois hors du système euh, éducatif. Mais nous avons euh, travaillé à ce que tous les élèves qui étaient en classe d'examen puissent euh, prendre part à l'examen dans les mêmes conditions que euh, les années précédentes. Alors, ce que nous avons fait aussi, c'est que dès début octobre, nous avons repris les activités avec toutes les autres classes intermédiaires en donnant un mois et demi à chaque, euh, on va dire, à chaque enseignant pour achever son programme. Mais un autre impact aussi, c'est l'impact sur le financement de l'éducation, parce que le gouvernement a dû prendre des mesures, donc, euh, euh, régulation budgétaire pour pouvoir soutenir d'autres secteurs. Donc, on a ressenti vraiment l'impact de cette maladie sur les apprentissages. Thank you very much, Minister. It is very good to hear that solutions have been found to keep girls in school in Burkina Faso. And Minister Ersten, over to you, please. Thank you so much, um, Armel. You know, in Norway, schools have been closed or partially closed, uh, actually, over both a shorter uh, or longer periods, depending on the situation in, in different parts of the country. Um, and during this period of closure, children have received online education. Um, for many children, this has worked out fairly well, I, I have to say. But, but uh, again, for others, less so. So we know that closed schools Uh, had a, a, a negative effect on children's uh, motivation also and, and social and emotional well-being. So it's, um, it's, it's, it's really uh, devastating to, 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 to more and more understand the negative consequences that closed schools um, are having. So, so that just shows us how important schools actually are for, for every, uh, all children. Thank you very much, Minister. It is very concerning to see how the virus has impacted education in both Norway and Burkina Faso. But it is great to hear that measures have been taken to keep children in learning. Because we know that in other countries, there are countries where they couldn't find any solution. Most of them are just staying at home without doing anything. So I would, la- I would ask a question to the children in Burkina Faso. 
What is your favorite subject in school? Je m'appelle Mohamed. J'ai 10 ans. À l'école, j'aime. J'aime la lecture et les mathématiques. J'aime aussi apprendre mes leçons. J'aimerais être médecin. Good luck. Wish you all the best. Now we also want to ask a question to the children in Norway. Who do you want to be in the future when you grow up? You want to be you? I want to be an art teacher and, and um, a teacher. And uh, I also want to be a makeup artist and a dresser. <laughs> hairdresser. Wow, amazing. I wish you all the best. We now have few, a few questions for you from the students. Let's first go to Alida and Eric from Norway. Who would like to ask question to Minister Owaro? Hello, my name is Alida. I'm 11 years old in the sixth grade. Hello, my name is Ulrik. I am 12 years old and in the sixth grade. Our question for you is, how do you ensure all children are able to go to school? Alors, il faut dire qu'au Burkina Faso, le taux brut d'accès à l'école primaire est de 86%. 86,6%. Ça voudrait dire qu'on a encore 13% de nos enfants en âge de scolarisation qui ne sont pas dans le système scolaire au niveau du primaire 2. Donc, nous construisons des salles de classe, nous recrutons des enseignants, nous... Mettons à disposition des élèves des manuels de fourniture scolaire pour leur permettre d'aller à l'école. Donc, c'est un effort que nous devons faire, mais que nous ne pouvons pas réussir seuls. Nous avons besoin de l'accompagnement d'amis, de pays amis, de partenaires bilatéraux ou multilatéraux, comme le Partenariat mondial pour l'éducation. Minister Ersten, how are you ensuring children in Norway can go to school? As I already had said, the research shows that and indicates that education inequalities have, have risen during the pandemic as schools increasingly rely on, on distance education also. So that is why access to internet, computers, TV and radios and, and a quiet room for study uh, are highly unequal. So, and also when it comes to teachers' level of preparedness to teach over the internet uh, varies considerably also. So, so again, all children and youth must be provided with, with quality education, not least when it comes to children with disabilities. So that is why also in, in, in inclusion has to be an important part and principle when it comes to build back better education uh, systems for the future. Partners such as GPE are really crucial in, in ensuring that all return to schools and receive quality education by building resilient and inclusive educational systems. So we really have to learn now from the last year's experience and make sure that systems are ready to tackle another crisis such as a pandemic. Thank you very much, ministers, and thank you, Alida and Ulrich. And I think this is also a great initiative from the GPE because we can talk about the children without them. So having them in this discussion, I think this is a great opportunity. This is will allow them and give them opportunity to speak up for themselves. Now, let's go back to Burkina Faso. Bonjour, Monsieur le ministre. Je m'appelle Kabore Wenlacida Marie-Louila. J'ai 11 ans. Quand je serai grand, je souhaiterai être médecin. Ma question pour vous est la suivante. Qu'est-ce que vous faites pour permettre à beaucoup de filles comme moi de s'épanouir et de, et de pouvoir réaliser leur rêve? Bonjour, and thank you so much for a, a really good, uh, good question. And you know, providing girls with a quality education is, as I said, uh, one of the top priorities for the, the Norwegian uh, government and also one of Norway's main development objectives. And, and as I'm, I'm really concerned when it comes to the devastating effects of COVID-19. And when we know that school closure have kind of stripped many children and especially girls of the opportunity to learn and to have a safe space. So when we know that we risk that millions of girls and, and it's, it's such a high number 
of, of girls that will never return to school. That is a such huge loss for each and one of those girls, but also for the whole community as a whole. Quality education for, for all children and all girls is so vital for providing equal opportunities and to assure that no one is left behind. And, and girls' education is, is one of GP's top priorities and an important reason why we support GP. And from our own experience here in Norway, in our country, we know that an investment in a girl is an investment in social and economic development for the country. So that is the most important thing we can do, actually to, to assure that the girls have the same opportunity as everyone else, and it should start at school. Thank you very much, Minister, for your answer. Now I have a question for Minister Owaro. How are you ensuring that girls in Burkina Faso can become anything that they want? Là, ce que je peux dire, les efforts, justement, pour accompagner les filles consistent pour certaines, donc, à leur apporter un soutien financier sous forme de bourse ou sous forme de kit, sous forme de moyens de déplacement. Et ces différents efforts ont quand même permis que nous puissions avoir la situation suivante dans notre pays. Nous avons euh, la parité qui est respectée au niveau de l'enseignement primaire entre les filles et les garçons avec une tendance même légèrement inversée en faveur des filles, précoces. Et nous luttons aussi contre les mariages en discutant avec euh, souvent, parce qu'il arrive dans certaines localités de notre pays que des filles soient promises à des, à des, à des hommes et il nous arrive de discuter avec ces personnes-là qui sont des fiancés pour qu'ils permettent à ces filles-là de poursuivre leur scolarité. Et souvent, euh, cet engagement des parents à donner leurs filles en mariage est souvent guidé par, on va dire, des difficultés financières, la pauvreté et tout. Et nous essayons d'apporter un soutien pour faire en sorte que, effectivement, on puisse laisser les filles achever leur scolarité. Avec l'accompagnement donc du Partenariat mondial pour l'éducation, mais aussi d'autres partenaires, je pense que nous allons y arriver, comme on l'a fait depuis deux ans pour le collège. Merci. Minister Ersten and Minister Oero, thank you both of you for joining us today for this incredible discussion. We've, we've heard a quite number of voices from both Norway and Burkina Faso on how COVID-19 has impacted education in your countries. And we are glad to see that your governments are really ensuring that children are able to continue learning and achieve their dreams. It is really good to hear that. But before we end, we would love to invite you, Minister Ulstein and Minister Oero, and all the students in the class to show your support for education by raising your hands. Let's do like me. We are deeply worried about the way COVID-19 has impacted children all over the world, from Norway to Burkina Faso, Kenya, and Vanuatu. While these countries are different in many ways, we have seen that in general children are eager to get back into the classrooms, to learn, to see their friends and to build skills to fulfill their dreams. Education in low-income countries will need sustained support and attention to avert a catastrophe for millions of the most vulnerable children. And that is why I'm happy to raise my hand for education and for GPE so that every child, wherever they are in the world, can have their chance to learn.